Hello, my name is Ben from Timothy Gobi, and as for my project, the BTG interviews, today I'm interviewing Richard Ashton. So, Richard, I'm going to ask you 15 questions to do with your uh, acting career. You, you do acting, is there anything oh, else you do? Indeed. Um, is there anything else I do? Like all actors, I do lots of things. Um, mm -hmm. But is acting your main... Oh, it's my job. It's all I've done yeah. ever since I left college. It's just I've got to ask because uh, most of the questions are about acting. No, so that's fine. Sometimes I have to change the words to do like director, writer. <gasps> well, okay. No, that might, we may get to that. But yes, I'm an actor. Question one. When and where were you born and where did you grow up as a child? I was born in St Mary's Hospital, Manchester, in 1965, October the 2nd. Yep. And I grew up in East Didsbury until the age of 12 when I moved to North Harrow in London. Okay. Next question. Mm -hmm. When did you start acting and what inspired you? I did some school plays. Mm -hmm. uh, not very successful at primary school. I found it very difficult. I was very tall, six foot two when I was 12. Wow. Started to do some plays at high school. Um, and then really through the academic side, fell into studying drama at university. Okay. But I think by that point I knew that I wanted to be an actor, even though I didn't know you could be an actor. Yeah. So, what, how old? You were 12 years old, you say? No, um, when, I really, well, when I did my first school play, you know, I would have been primary school. I think I played Pharaoh in Joseph, which was mm -hmm. interesting. Um, and then at high school, I played John Proctor in The Crucible, so I would be 15 then. Then in sixth form college, I played Oberon in Midsummer Night's Dream. Then at university, I played a whole raft of parts like you do. And my graduation day, which was in 1987, uh, was my first professional job when I played uh, Prospero in The Tempest. I'm sure it would have been a lot different um, then compared to now, wouldn't it? Like university and stuff and acting. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I mean, I was lucky in one sense that I got my tuition paid, although I didn't get any of my maintenance. So I did have to have other jobs whilst I was at university, whereas of course, people who go now have to pay for everything, or well, they have to take out loans. I had an overdraft at the end of university, which I managed to pay off. Um, but yeah, the situation then was much easier for someone like myself, with the family who didn't have any money, to go to university and, and, and get by. And in fact, I'd say the work I did outside was helpful to me because I ended up being a stagehand at the Theatre Hall in Norwich and working for a sound and light production company as well as studying my degree. So that helped me understand the business in a, in a round way. Yeah. Next question. Mm -hmm. Did you have any other jobs before acting and are there any other jobs you'd like to try in the future? Ooh, good question. Uh, no, I, I really did go from college straight into a, a job as an actor. But then, like a lot of actors, particularly early on, I did a number of different kinds of things for money, uh, which are all the usual things you'd expect, building bar work, um, yeah. some hospitality work, that kind of thing. What I've discovered recently is I rather wish that I'd also trained as a horticulturalist, uh, specifically into fruit and tree management, um, and possibly something to do with water management as That's well. Exciting. Yeah, it is. It's, and, and, and they're, they're interests to me now. Um, and at 53, I'm not about to become a tree surgeon. Yeah. Um, but but I, there are there are things I will pursue alongside my acting career. Mm. What is your favourite TV show and film you have worked on? <gasps> Very good question. I have affection for all sorts of things. Uh, the New Adventures of Robin Hood was four years of my life in Lithuania. That took me to America, where I lived for ten years. And it was playing a quintessential English hero, albeit in an American themed show. Little John, give me a hand. <laughs> Little John, quit playing. Stand aside. <laughs> I thought you were strong. I... Ah! Hey, watch it! What are you doing here? I've come to help Robin Hood. Ingrid, you're making a fool of yourself. Robin doesn't need your help. Go home! You can't bully me! No! <sighs> Young girls are so excitable at this age. I can use your help over here, Friar. Certainly. I was just gathering some beautiful...
for a rosemary for tonight's stew. You know what, Mary? That is not rosemary. I'm wrong. I don't care what it is. We're running out of time. Time? Of course. That's what it is. Hurry up. We've got to be ready for Robin. Well, I'm from do like more British actors, though, don't they? They do, they do, and, and that's been a very good source Superman, for me. that's played by an American actor, you know, it's just the list goes on. It does, it's, it's, it's true. Sorry, I, I said that wrong. Superman's played by a British actor. Yes, yes, yes well, it did, and in fact, Spider-Man too. Yes. Who was, who was all of the male part, all the juvenile male parts in Billy Elliot, which is a musical I just did. So we do, I mean, uh, favourite? Gosh, well, yes, I did the musical of Billy Elliot in the West End. I loved that. Um, I love doing Shakespeare when I get the opportunity in, in nice productions. Uh, I love television comedy because I know that it reaches so many people. Uh, and it's actually a very tricky thing to do, to be funny uh, in a recorded sense. It's quite good. One actor that I would say is very good, because Rowan Atkinson is known for doing comedy roles. And when he played May Gray, the detective, ah, I thought that was very impressive, yeah, that he yeah. could actually do a serious role. And it's the only serious role I believe he's done, isn't it? Or uh, well, there's only I been a few. Feel, uh, I'm not sure, well, yeah. I've got up some pals on that, actually. And they, they were very sorry it isn't going to be continued. Mm -hmm. But no, it's, I love it. And I love May Gray altogether, but I certainly love his May Gray. Uh, it's very nice and understated. Very good. I think that's a surprise, is, is yeah. Rowan is such an incredibly expressive uh, physical actor. Um, you know, we all know about Mr. Bean, but also all his other uh, physical work. And there he is, being this very understated yeah. French detective. Yeah. And um, I wonder why there wasn't a third series this year, and that's because he was filming the third Johnny English, most likely. Yes, that may be true. It, it could also like be. Ben, ben Miller wasn't in the second film, and I, I think that's because right. he was shooting Death in Paradise at the time. It was, it was the same time frame. Yeah, well, you often get choices like that. Yeah. And I believe with Maygrave, there was a choice of will you commit to a whole year and do three episodes? And when he said, I can commit to two, they said, well, then we won't do it. That's what I believe happened. Uh, okay. and, and, and that happens a lot. I mean, it's a choice, it's a problem everybody wants, mm -hmm. which is, I've got a choice between two things. You have to choose. Some people might be disappointed in one choice or the other. Um, it's like most actors these days in superhero movies fight between Marvel and DC. They don't know which one to choose. Obviously, they, they're always tr Marvel's always trying to get the best actors, but they turn out and say, "No, nah, I'm a DC fan." Marvel, I believe Marvel wanted Dwayne Johnson to play a role, and he said, "Nope, I'm playing Black Adam in DC." So, and there's, there's quite a lot of switching going on oh, now. Well, I yeah. say. Who knows if that wasn't also something contractual? Who mm. knows if if because oh gosh, there used to be this thing. You either work for, work for Warner Brothers or Disney. And if I went for a business meeting with Disney, I'd wear my, my Warner Brothers tie. And if I went for Warner Brothers, I'd wear my Disney tie. I had a great Paisley tie with little Mickey Mouse's in it. The same, yeah. And, and in the end, they'll, they'll both employ you. Um, and if you can fit them both in, you will. But I suspect for some people, there might be a, a little bit of a demarcation. Yeah. Uh, as for Twitch, I don't know. I don't know how he makes his decisions. Very good actors. There's, there's so many good actors out there they, these days. I think that they need to um, give more younger actors the chance to get to the stage where the higher actors are, if that makes sense. Well, it does, and when the, when the business shrinks, what we find is that uh, people that used to do movies are now doing the tellies, and people doing the big tellies are doing smaller tellies, and so those people trying to come up and do the smaller tellies find, yeah. oh, such and such a person is doing it. Ridiculous. Oh, yes, they are. That's the business. And they're making a lot of movie film trilogies um, mm -hmm. into TV series, because we've recently got Jack Ryan, which was made into a TV series, That's Taken, right. yeah. um, and I believe now that they're trying to turn Jack Reacher into a TV series. I believe so. So, it's, it's, so yeah. It's, yeah. it's looking really good. Oh, Is he six foot five? Six seven. You'd be ideal to play Jack Reacher, you're the right height. Certainly tall on Tom Cruise. Yes. <laughs> he's a, I think what it was with Tom Cruise, he's a good actor, but we know him for Mission Impossible. To go and play another similar role such as the same, it just, it doesn't really work. I thought it was an odd choice, but I thought he did. I've not seen it. the Jack Reacher movies oh, myself, I have. It's, but um, people, I, I understand that people don't like them, but I think they're big good films. I've started to read the first book recently. Yeah, I, I, I think they're a bit different from the books. Yeah, the first film's based yeah. on the eighth, eighth book and the second film's based on the 18th book. Really? The, wow. the ninth and 18th book, sorry. Wow. wow. Do you want me to carry on with the next question? Go on, please do, yeah. And keep you here. That's good. Cool. Um, what is the hardest or most challenging TV show and film that you have worked on? 
Most recently, Doctor Who was physically the hardest thing I've done in a very long time. And what did you do in Doctor Who? I was Friday the Ice Warrior in Empress of Mars. That was you? That was me. Wow. Episode 9, Season 10. I really, do. I'm not just saying this because I'm interviewing you, I did really enjoy that in that episode. It's a great episode, isn't it? And, and it, I think Mark Gatiss is right and proud of it. It, it weaves together lots of different storylines and everybody got something interesting to do. I had a lovely storyline uh, which changed as we filmed and I had different relationships with uh, Pearl's character, Bill. Uh, and Peter. And, and Peter. Uh, my relationship with him was pretty constant actually through the various versions, which was quite nice. Uh, but it's a, it's a very clever episode because it mashes so many films and genres together. Um, and I think, it, and with Adele playing the Empress, which is superb, uh, we, we, you know, we, we did well. I, I hope they bring us back. You told us why you came here. What does he get out of it? Nothing. Nothing? Well, he was hoping to find his people, but it appears that he was asleep on that ship for much longer than he anticipated. Mars is dead. Dead as a coffin nail. Friday's the last of his kind. Is he now? You know what Friday is, then? He's an ice warrior. And they're the proper Martians, right? They belong here. Yes, the indigenous species, an ancient reptilian race. They built themselves a sort of biomechanical armor for protection. The creature within is at one with its counterpace, the ice warriors. They could build a city under the sand, yet drench the snows of Mars with innocent blood. They could slaughter whole civilizations, yet weep with the crushing of a flower. Like the Vikings. Yes. Yes, very much. Yeah. Kirk Douglas and Tony Curtis. Oh, the theme tune is amazing. There's this brilliant bit where, where his eye gets gouged out. Why have you really come back? I am old and tired and spent. Well, I, I was hoping to interview Peter and Per at this uh, in London Comic Con this year, oh. uh, but sadly they didn't have enough time. No. Um, but I will get in touch with the agencies because they're both of the same age um, in future, and hopefully we'll. Um, get an interview because sure, Peter yeah. is a very talented actor and when he left Doctor Who he went and did Paddington 2 and I just thought I was at the cinema one day and I decided to see Paddington 2 oh, yeah. I hadn't seen the first Paddington before um, and I just thought as well as Hugh Grant and Ben Wisham is it Wisham? Is that Wisham. Wisham. Wisham yeah um, he's Capaldi was very good it's his character it's the way he does his characters it's just yeah, yeah very good and Paddington 2 got 100% on critics so it was, really? it was praised well well Peter Capaldi Earned an Oscar with his student film. Do you know that? What he, student film was that? He, he made a short film as a student and did one Oscar. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yes, I, I do remember now because when I was um, writing his interview and oh, searching yeah. on I, IMDb, yeah. it did say something about a short film. So yeah. I do remember. Yeah, and he did a right. short film where he played Sherlock Holmes as well. Right. So it's quite that's weird seeing Capaldi as Holmes and, that's you know, because <laughs> you've got Tom Baker, he's played Sherlock Holmes oh, yeah. in The yeah. Hounds of the Basketball in 1982. And he's played Doctor Who. Gosh, he played good. Holmes as soon as he left Doctor Who. Well, Did shortly he? after. Yeah, it, was yeah, a, it was the same year, so I presume uh, it was after. It would be, yeah. Uh, what is your favourite role you have played, and are there any other roles you'd like to play in the future? I've always enjoyed playing Little John very much uh, in different films, uh, in different forms, uh, TV, uh, theatre, even the musical, and in pantomime as well. Okay. Um, so I'm always happy to go back to that as an old friend. Things I'd like to do I haven't had a chance to yet. Um, uh, Fagin in Oliver, I've always wanted to play. I uh, don't know why. Um, Which character is that? Is that the gentleman that shouts more? Or? 
No, 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 no. In, in, in Oliver, that's um, that he's, he's, the, he's, the, he's the leader of the thieves. He's the one who sets oh, yes, Oliver and all the boys to. Sorry, I haven't seen all of the twists since I was little, so um, yeah. Well, of course, well, no, probably Fagin's in all the versions, in the musical version and the straight version. You could always play the character that you suggested in the, I don't know if they're doing a second season, uh, the Kensian. That's based on all the Charles, Charles right, Dickens, um, Charles Dickens I did probably, novels. They'd probably choose somebody much, much slighter than me, because and normally Fagin's a little man. Yeah. And they've just introduced um, uh, Oliver Twist at the end of season, oh, series nice. one. And that's Dickensian. Yeah, okay. very good TV series. It was 2016 or 2017, I believe. Oh, um, yeah, that was that was good to watch, even though I've not watched Charles Dickens stuff or read his stuff before. <gasps> oh. Dickens is a great populist writer. Dickens would have been writing EastEnders today if he'd been alive. Well, Dickens was, um, I believe, uh, what gave Conan Doyle um, oh. inspiration. Um, and I believe Shakespeare, um, I believe all these famous actors famous sorry famous authors mm. that know of other authors maybe that's where they got their ideas from yeah Conan Doyle was inspired by somebody he was taught by at university for Dr Oaks. Joseph Bath yeah exactly and um, I've recently learned I'm not too sure the facts are true that Ian Fleming um, was inspired by Sherlock Holmes and that's why he created James Bond and the same with Batman and Sherlock Holmes um, oh, right. it, no. this, this is just stuff I've heard online I don't know if it's true or it's oh. a fact I've never heard Fleming say that. Uh, but if, you look, if you look at the original illustration of Sherlock Holmes and the illustration of James Bond, they look similar. Not completely similar, just similar. Interesting. Interesting. Don't know. Yeah. Mm. Question seven. Which actors and actresses have you enjoyed working with and which ones would you like to work with in the future? Oh, gosh. So many. Some of whom are here today I didn't mention. Uh, I've done a pantomime with Colin Baker. That was good fun. When was that? What year? Oh, 1993 or something. Um, oh gosh, I worked with Christopher Lee for quite a long time. That was delightful. Um, Amazing. Uh, exactly. Jeffrey Bailden, who people will know from, from Cat Weasel and from Wurzel Gummidge. Uh, Mary Tam. I'm thinking of Doctor Who actors here that I've worked with. She came out onto Robin Hood, played the Apples of Kirklees, was wonderful. Good news, good news. What is it, darling? Have you been consulting the demons without us? Do you know who you cut your feet on? No. He's a close friend and personal companion of my horrid nephew, Robin Hood. So? Robin has a reputation among the peasants for doing good. Every family has a skeleton in the closet. What's that got to do with us? Just think. If Robin's friend turns to evil acts, then the peasants will turn against him. If that happens, Robin will have nowhere to hide, and Prince John will easily capture him. So all we have to do is send Little John out to do bad. Lie, cheat, steal. Just make sure everyone knows who he is. Little John, friend of Robin Hood's. Oh, I like it. There really are so many lovely people out there to work with who are tremendous. And in terms of people I'd like to work with, um, gosh, again. I mean, you're just lucky to get the chance to work with any of these people, particularly people that you admire. I always admired Peter Capaldi and I got a chance to work with him. And I remember him from Local Hero when he was a very young actor. Amazing. So it's great to be able to work with him. Um, who else is out there? Gosh, uh, everyone. I mean, gosh, Patrick Stewart. I'd love to work with Patrick Stewart to see what he does up close. That would be fantastic. Um, uh, this, oh gosh, it's just so good. If I say this, there's even there people in the fall today I'd love to work with, so it's great. Yeah. No, remembering about Robin Hood, what did you uh, actually, sorry, I mean, this isn't a question on the book, hmm. what did you think of the uh, Robin of Sherwood, Doctor Who? Oh, the Robin of Sherwood from the 80s, the BBC um, one. The, the BBC one. Oh, on I BBC see. With yes. uh, Peter Capaldi uh, yeah. and Jenna Coleman. It was a few yeah, years ago. I did. It was a little while ago, wasn't it? Uh, it? It was a pastiche of a certain aspect of Robin Hood, and I thought it was clever in that. But it was about Doctor Who, it wasn't about Robin Hood. It was very funny. The, the um, well, I could say banter between. Capaldi and the actor that played yeah. Robin Hood, it was, yeah. that was very funny and, and I thought and that was very was, good how they did that. Well, it was about the role of heroes and, and it was about playing a hero and I thought that's why it was a very clever thing to do and Robin Hood is as good an example of a, of a mythical hero as you might like to find in a forest in Germany, so that was good. Yeah. Might be a, a little bit 
little bit much, but... Whew, what do you reckon, Doctor? By all the sets. Are there any more in there? Found him, you actually found Robin Hood. That is not Robin Hood. Well, then, who, sir, is about to relieve you from that box? <laughs> Nobody, sir. Not in this universe or the next. Well, then, draw your sword and prove your words. I have no sword. I don't need a sword. Because I am the doctor. And this is my spoon. You're amazing. That's some experience. Richard the Lion. Another the Bajrak. And a friend. He had the most enormous. Ego. Takes one to no one. Like I said, my box. Question eight, do you listen to any music? And if so, what sort of music? Ah, everything. Literally everything. Um, I'm the same, I listen to all sorts of music, really. There's nothing I specifically like. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and things will inspire me from movies, things will... Uh, I, I do go to classical music concerts sometimes, quite enjoy those. Um, somebody was playing with some Eminem the other day, trying to say, look, this is why this guy's good. And I quite like Anglo-Saxon poetry and realised that, yes, what he's doing as a rapper is, is very like an Anglo-Saxon poem. Um, so I'm open to everything, literally all the time. Um, and I will search through YouTube almost on random to see what pops up just to see what I've missed or not missed or, you know, uh, listen to some Underworld on the way up uh, in the van. Now, that's always good for a laugh. They're making a lot of films about music now and stuff. I understand that they're making a music film about Queen. So I've oh, yeah. advertised at the cinema. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've noticed that they're making a lot of films now about um, music people uh, and their lives. I think that's always been a great crossover between, you know, in the same way there's lots of been stage plays about musical heroes. And a, and a film, of course, is a great environment in which to, to drive a thing forward by the soundtrack. So I think that's always true. And I think we're all waiting for a Fleetwood Mac stage show to come out, which hasn't quite happened yet. But Queen, why not? Why not? Yep, I, sh I will definitely see the film. I believe it's out at the end of this month. Oh, cool. Number nine. Which directors have you enjoyed working with, and are there any you'd like to work with in the future? Well, Wayne Yip on my episode of Doctor Who was a very interesting director. I, I liked his approach. He was very tech savvy, very visual savvy, but also knew how to talk to actors. Some directors are very, very good at the technical side, not so good at actors, and some the other way around. Um, I worked a lot with an a, a a Australian editor who, who's become a, a director now, Adrian Carr. I worked, enjoy, always enjoy working with him. Um, I've, I've worked for the great, some of the BBC greats like Harold Snow in sitcom. Again, totally different approach, totally different world, teaches you something new. It's very rare that you work with someone and don't learn something from them. And so my ambition probably is to, is to work with a director I haven't met yet. I always wanted to be directed by Danny Boyle because he comes from the same town as me. Danny Boyle, the recent director that's left the James Bond. He did indeed, yes. Yes, that's right. He's, he's gone off to do other things. But I've not the, seen any other work that he's done. That's the first I heard of him when, when the uh, James Bond... He would have done. Uh, train spot. I've not heard his name before. Uh, um, I've not got um, round to watching Train Spot yet. I am okay. planning on watching. Did you see the Olympics opening ceremony? Uh, yes, I've seen snippets of it yeah. on YouTube of the um, Queen 
quick on his on Just his bombarding with the Queen in Upton. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, that was very funny. Very good, very good, yeah. yeah. And then I saw something called uh, Facebook recently where uh, uh, it was just like a little like um, caption and Don Daniel Craig had, what should I do about Donald Trump now? Huh? And she put, make it look like an accident. That's <laughs> and I was just like, wow, that's bad. That's good, that's pretty fun. Yeah. Number 10. Which writers and authors have you enjoyed working with, and are there any you'd like to work with in the future? Well, very much Mark Gettys. I, I, I like his work very much. And it'd be very interesting to see. Yes, of course. Of course. And, and with both of them in their different directions, I'd like to see if they've got anything I could do in the future. Um, I think Mark's very talented. What, Paul Abbott. Mm -hmm. Paul Abbott, because I didn't like Chambers very much because it was too close to home from where I grew up and I, I didn't quite appreciate the joke. I love no offence, like you wouldn't believe. And his, his ability to have really sharp, witty dialogue that's both emotionally truthful, truthful and moves the action along incredibly. So I, I'd be great to work, for, to work with him sometime. Yeah. Next question. Mm. One thing I will say about Mark though is He's very clever in what he does in Sherlock. He writes and he acts. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But that's not unheard of. I mean, it's great that he does it. In fact, he, he got great plaudits for his role in, how was it, Tattoo? Not Tattoo, what do I mean? Taboo. Taboo, thank you. Yes, he was in Taboo, uh, uh, Tom Hardy's. Taboo came, came, his episode of Taboo came out whilst we were doing a read through for Doctor Who. We will give a round of applause. He was very good in Christopher Robin as well. I didn't see that. I saw that recently at the cinema because it was out last month. Um, and yes, he was he was very good in that. And I've seen him in other things as well. And yeah. I just think it, the, the things that he can do, like write and do that, is brilliant. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Sherlock Holmes. It's my main passion. Um, and the, in my strongest belief, the BBC Sherlock is a good Sherlock for modern day. But my Sherlock Holmes will always be Jeremy Brett because oh right because, okay because yeah, he yeah. followed the book a hundred percent. That's what I like <laughs> about Brett. But Cumberbatch brings a more modern side into it, and Mark and Steve are always on board writing. That's what makes the show strive. That is true. That's true. You okay to do the last yeah, five questions? Absolutely, yeah. Let's go. Question eleven: Do you have a favourite book, book series, book or book series, and who is your favourite author? Child, I read everything of Tolkien and loved that. I'm actually not so keen on the films of Tolkien because the pictures are so good in my head. Uh, I read a lot of Patrick O'Brien, Master and Commander, I love those books. Um, I read a lot of non-fiction at the moment, which are not quite in that genre. I love Dickens, actually. I happily read Dickens uh, a lot. I like the odd crime novel here and there. I like some of the classic science fiction writers. I read a lot of uh, Isaac Asimov and uh, Arthur C. Clarke. Which I think what I'm reading at the moment but is non-fiction. Um, I, tend, I tend to save that part of my brain for reading scripts. Because there's, there's enough scripts to be read, you know, and enough things to be worked on. So I actually don't have a lot of time uh, for fiction reading. But you enjoy reading this? It's something that you... Oh, absolutely. It's essential. It's essential for everybody. And, and, and reading whatever you like to read. Uh, people decry some forms of literature and I just think that's rubbish. I like comics, actually. I think that's a, a very stimulating way of reading a story. It's pictures and words, or just pictures. You know, uh, we were a bit bad in this country at valuing words over everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that's right. I think it's, it's all important. Mm -hmm. Question 12. How often do you travel and what types of travel do you use? I cycle mostly, if I can, uh, and then take the bus. After that, I will take a tube or a train. So you use public transport? Oh yeah, and then I have a van, but I only use it when I actually need a van. So you're not one of, you're not one of those actors that like to be, um, well, I'm not, I don't mean this rude towards actors, but actors higher up, I'm not saying that you're low down, and like to like go in cars and stuff and have their own drivers. Well, I can sort of see why some people don't want to necessarily use public transport because they are frightened they might be accosted. And I have There's to say, always a press, isn't there? Well, like that, to be honest with you, fact. I think it's the general public as much as anyone. Uh, we can be a little uncool in this country about seeing somebody you know from the television 
And I've seen it happen to people I've been with. And, hey, mate, you're that bloke off the telly. And some people are very good at it. And some people, frankly, are a bit, you know, rude. I don't have that problem. I've, I've never had that problem, even when I've been in things which are quite popular. Um, so, no, I don't worry about that. But I have been with people who genuinely, I mean, a very good friend of mine uh, came to see us in a, in, a, in a play in Scotland, and he was a very famous Scottish actor. And the people in the pub basically meant he had to leave because they wouldn't leave my home. Uh, another friend of mine is a little pundit. He was in uh, M&L and Brookside and that for a long time. And again, we were in a having a pint and we had to leave because they just couldn't take it. They couldn't handle it. Was, it's just a bit silly that, obviously you say it doesn't happen all the time, but even though you're an actor, you're still a member of the British you well, know, you people. Are, you are, so you should be given the privacy that other people would expect to have. You know? Yeah, and I think most, for most of the time, Say, oh, thank you very much. Uh, glad you like the show. Um, have a word, and then you know to move on. Most when people don't. So, if somebody has had a bad experience like that, particularly if a woman has had a bad experience like that in public, I can totally understand why she says, "No, I'm, I'm getting a car." You know, in, in my working life, I've, I've escorted various colleagues to and from their car outside the theatre simply because there are people who stalk you. Some some colleagues from Doctor Who have had that experience relatively recently, and. You just go, no, so I'll walk out with you. Because, I don't know, I don't know, it, it, it's an odd thing. Not everybody respects everybody else's privacy. It's where we're living. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Question, we've done 13, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, 13 we're on now, sorry. Do you enjoy playing any sports? If so, what sort of sports games do you play? I used to love playing basketball. Before that, I loved playing rugby. And I always played football for the school, quite like tennis. Uh, I got into dinghy sailing, which is a great laugh, but takes a lot of time to organise. Um, these days, I cycle, uh, play a bit of table tennis, uh, don't really play contact sports anymore. Uh, there's too much danger of getting injured for work, because uh, I have had occasions when I've sort of not quite been right on set, and you don't want that. You know, even just a twisted knee or a, a, a funny elbow. And you, can't do it, so I've had to cut the contact sports out. Um, I swim, I love swimming. Uh, but I spend most of my time outdoors if I can, uh, either walking or, or running or cycling or gardening. In fact, I think gardening is a sport. It's both a, a, a hobby, it's a craft, it's a job, but it's also a sport because you're so involved in it. You, you, you know, you go outside, you can spend eight, nine, ten hours outside and not notice. Yeah. Time does fly by. Yeah. We're on our last two questions. Now. Fourteen. As an actor, how do you feel your career has, has adapted over the years, and which areas of acting do you feel you need to improve in? Um, there's something that happens naturally because you age, and therefore the roles that you get, the kinds of work you get, change. You can't really change that. Uh, I've certainly got a lot better on camera. Uh, funnily enough, one of the things I'd like to improve on is my audio work. I'd like to do more uh, voice acting. That's a different skill, so that's something I'm studying a little bit at the moment um, in terms of character work and also in terms of presentation and voiceover. Um, so I've, I've done pretty much what I wanted to do singing, and I'd like to carry on singing on stage and perhaps even do some screen musicals. That'd be quite nice, but that's not always appropriate. What else other to learn? I'd like to do some more puppetry again, actually. I started out doing that and loved it. Um, but yeah, I just improve on all fronts. That's what I'm always trying to do. And I will take a, a training course or a workshop or a session, you know, with a teacher all the time. Because that's what you do. The main thing is just improve. Yeah. Always improve. Uh, and, and you know, keep looking. Final question. Have you enjoyed this interview today and what advice would you give me for my future job as a film director and actor? Wow, there's a question. Uh, it's, I have enjoyed it very much. Interesting questions, very good. Um, ask me things people don't normally ask me actually, particularly about what I'd like to do in the future. And my question is good because I'm asking them, this is yeah, why I ask each actor and actress. Yeah, they are good because they're, they're about not just what I've liked but what I want to do. Yeah. That's good. Um, and I think what you have to do with questions is think about what you want from the interviewee and that's almost like having an understanding of how you want your interview to look at the end 
uh, you're very keen on sharing your views as well, which is very good, it's very interesting, and then it becomes a conversation between us. Yeah. So that's one kind of interview, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, Parkinson, famously, was very good at that. He, he would have a very clear set of questions, but would always allow himself to make personal observations in order to get more out of the interviewer. And you can think about the balance there of um, whether you should share something with the interviewee or whether you should find out what the interviewee wants. That's, that's personal. That's, that's how I it actually received some advice from Jeremy Paxman last December. Yeah. I got in touch with his agency, asked him if I could have a short meeting with him to get some advice about interviews. Axel. Um, and he actually <laughs> replied, his yeah. agent had a message from him in a reply. Ah. Um, and he gave me a reply saying, um, I can't remember what it exactly said, I yeah. got it at the top of my head. Yeah. But he says, it's a bit of the lights, you're there to interview them and find stuff out. You're not there to be their friend or something like that. Well, so yes, he, 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 well, yeah, he likes that. I, I think I've rephrased yeah. that wrong, but the way you No, 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 I can believe him saying that. Yeah. You're, you're there to find stuff out. But I, I do the, my The point. reason why I'm laughing mm -hmm. is because Jeremy Paxman does that, but he also interjects his own view and his own opinion and I his saw own TV. personality Brilliant. so much that yeah. sometimes I well, shut up, let the person talk, you know. But yeah. hey, we all need those, those things. In terms of advice, uh, the, the, the best thing you can do is do what you do now, is make films and then look at them. And look at them, hopefully, with somebody else who's got some experience and you can talk about your framing and your lighting and your construction and, and how the interview's gone. Review your own work all the time. Uh, and just work as much as you can. There's lots of opportunities to get involved in film. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them unpaid or very low paid. But even if for 33 years, I will go and do a film for free if I think I'm going to learn something from it. I just did one the other weekend and it was, it was four days shooting. But I wanted to work with the director because I liked what he was saying and I wanted to see what he was doing in terms of how he used new technology, drones and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, try and find as many opportunities as you can. There's, there's a couple of websites I can think of. Uh, is it real people or, or something like that? But basically, it's a, it's, a, it's a notice board website where people are looking for crew or assistance, and you can post what I'm looking for for my film that I'm doing next well, year. This is it. I've so got the crew. I just haven't got the cast. Oh well, if you're looking for cast, you, 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 you know that's a good website to go to because a lot of people who haven't perhaps done very much are, are looking for stuff, and, and I'm always open to film schools and to other things like that, if I think we can do it without knocking too big a hole in the schedule, um, without it costing me too much money. Because you never know who you're going to meet. You, know, you, might, you might have got the funding for a huge series in five years' time. And because we've sat here today, you might think of me. Uh, and that is always the case. So yeah, I mean, obviously you're, you're putting this whole thing together yourself, aren't you? Yes. Um, well, now is the best time to do that. Previously, access yeah. to these things because of no internet. Impossible. Yeah. I mean, literally impossible. Yeah. Unless, like, your dad worked in a film studio, your, your mum yeah. worked for a producer or was a producer or something. Now, we can go clickety-click and go, ooh. That was easy. I wonder. Let's... And some people are really good. Famously, some great filmmakers are, are very open to people just writing to them. And they might send you a polite reply, or they might actually send you some advice, or goodness knows, they might say, well, actually, I could do that with a hand with this. If the question is always how I deal with what other people call rejection as just being not a lead that you can follow. Yeah. People say to me, how do you manage not being cast in all these shows? And I think, what are you talking about? No, I don't think about that. I think about the ones I do get cast in. And I, I will self-take an audition if I think the project's right for me and, and I'm right for it. Any number of times. And if you don't get chosen? Yes, they have actually chosen somebody else. That's okay. Yeah. They're allowed. You know, yeah. uh, hopefully life is long. And that, that's the other thing I always say to people. If life is long, if you really want to do these things, do it. But do it with the most open mind you can. And, and, and keep, feed your, your enthusiasm. Yeah. Thank you very much, Richard. Pleasure. Great pleasure. Good luck to you. Thank you.